Bible study time. So, praise the Lord, Sister, sister, sister Liz, she adapted when I said, okay, no Bible study for the kids over in the little building. She says, can we use this room here? I said, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> so, so, all right. Prayer requests, prayer requests. We're going to pray for Jake and Arlene for sure. Sick. All right. So I got Pedro who's in jail. Got him down. Pray for our church. Pray for our nation. Pray for Kayla. She, I'm missing her this morning. Maybe she's running late, but. And she's looking for a job. Pray for Chop. There we go. Chop was sick last week, so he probably shared it with. <laughs> That's where it all went. Yeah, started, started, <laughs> started the circle. That's what happens with uh, public schools. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, all right. So, uh, okay. So we had a praise that uh, her brother, her brother, and and or her uncle and aunt made it back to Phoenix. Okay, last week and helped. He helped to figure out this electrical problem we had, which was <clears throat> because I crosswired something. So we'll leave it at that. Anyhow, <laughs> notice, notice how fast I went past that. Amen. All right. okay. <laughs> Other prayer requests this morning. Other prayer requests. Isaiah. Okay. Oh, okay. For, for an extended period of time, or to get picked up on a DWI or something? No, it's probably going to be for an extended period of time. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's probably a false um, fighting with officers. What was that one? Resisting arrest. Resisting arrest. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good grief. I'm sorry, I just... Listen, I was a wild when I was younger, but when it came to dealing with the cops, there's no way I'd. Have. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's amazing how many how many times I got out of certain things by saying yes, sir, right. yes, sir, you're yes, sir, yes, officer, you got it, officer. <laughs> so, all right, other prayer requests. Uh, I want to pray for Isaiah's sisters, Ashley and Trinity. I want to get them safe. Got it. And yeah. What was the other one's name? Ashley and Trinity. Trinity. Okay. That uh, I've got my sister Isaiah baptized and saved. I want to try to get them so that they're uh, very worldly. Very worldly. Okay. So just pray about that. Got it. Okay. I want right. to uh, pray for all the people that need Jesus in their lives. Amen. Okay. Amen. Read a prayer for our young for Adam this morning too. Adam Adam was that man that come in came in with Tony yesterday to help because I was on him about coming to church. Tony and I both talked to him about coming to church this morning. He said he was going to try, so it's like okay, he need he needs to be saved. So he's, real nice. he's a real nice guy, but nice guys go to hell too. So, <laughs> so okay, all right. Any other prayer requests? No? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Praise Heavenly Father, God, thank you for your love, your mercy, and your wondrous grace and the very forgiveness of sin. Lord, I pray you'll t touch these prayer requests that, that have been brought before you, Lord. Don't, or we don't need to repeat them, for, for they've already been spoken out, and, and especially those that have made the request because it's coming from their heart. We'll touch this time of Bible study, touch our church this morning, Lord, and guide us and direct us in all that we need to be busy about doing for you and your glory. So, Lord, we are here to win people to Christ. Lord, help us to get that upon our hearts and then help us to get busy about it. We pray these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and pray you'll come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. All righty, open your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Pick on Jake for a minute. I got a, I got a text message last night <coughs> oh my phone's away going on about 11 o'clock saying uh we won't be to church tomorrow <laughs> you get to teach bible study too so all right so when it comes to the song service too don't expect me to be singing loud 
because as the way as it goes right now, I'll probably be I'll probably be using my voice for about four hours today. Okay, you know we all don't realize how much we talk or don't talk until you do something like I do or Jake does. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, because we go through the day talking. Okay, but. Give a message, give two messages, give three messages in a day, all right? And two song services, amen? We use our voice, okay? First Chronicles chapter 16, if you found it, say amen. First Chronicles, it's in the Old Testament. Amen? First Chronicles, okay. All right. So as you're looking forward to, I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of verses here. Verse 7 and 8, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7 and 8. This is King David. He said, Then on that day David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Now those were the singers, all right? He says, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. I'm calling my message this morning, I'm calling my lesson this morning, advice that Christians should heed. Advice that Christians should heed. All right? Listen, the, the, the advice given here, the advice by David is to the people of Israel many years ago is as good advice today as it was then. It was as good advice to us as God's children as it was to the Israelites in that day oh, so several hundreds of years ago. Amen? I think close to 1,400 years ago. I'd have to go back and look at my numbers, look at the dates, but some, some time ago. All right? Okay? All right? And if we, if we would just follow the advice given in this particular scripture, if we'd follow this advice, you'd be, see, you'd be amazed how many more blessings we'd see from God. Okay? So let's look, at, let's look at that scripture again. Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph, his brother. So the first thing he says here is give thanks. All right, look at verse 8. So because I'm going to kind of use verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. So he actually says it twice, Amen. So we need to be willing, and we need to be ready, and we need to be thanking God. Amen. All right? Thanking God, giving thanks, all right? Because, listen, there, there are many things, many things uh, that we should thank the Lord for in this physical realm. Yes. Amen? In this physical realm, okay? I mean, food, Amen? How many of us thank God for our food? Amen. All right. How many, of, how, many, how, many of, how many of us are willing to do it in a restaurant? Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Okay. Not just at home, but in a restaurant, out in public. Okay. All right. I bless little old Jamie's heart. Uh, he, not as much now, but when he was younger, we'd stop and get a snack someplace, and he'd say, hey, Pop, you going to pray? <laughs> Amen. And I use, and I even do that with little ones when we go out to eat. I'll have a little one pray at the table because it's teaching them to be public about their belief and about their, amen, all right? So we need to be willing to thank God for our food, thank God for our health. And we Americans need to remember that we need to thank God for our freedoms. Amen? amen? Our freedoms. If we didn't... If it, was, if it was not for God, we'd not have the freedoms we have today. Amen. We'd not have, you think, think about the world, think about the countries around this world. No, no. I like to ask this question. Is there any other country in the world people are willing to break the law or travel thousands of miles on foot to get into? How many, pe how many people you see trying to get into Russia? How many people you see trying to get into, into, into Iran or Iraq or China. China? Amen? We don't. Where are they trying to get into? America. America. What is one of the reasons they're trying to get into America? Freedom. Freedoms. Freedom of choice. Amen? 
Freedom of religion. Freedom of religion. Amen. Freedom to make money. Yep. Amen. All right. That's that's what you hear. That's what you hear on the news all the time is money, money, money. They want to come make money. No, it's a little more than that. Yeah. Amen. It's a little more than that. All right. Okay. Listen, but I, I, I want us to think about some of the things in the spiritual realm we need to not cease from thanking God for. Okay? Number one, we should thank him for providing his son as an offering for our sins. Second, Second Chronicles. Now, now it's Bible study time. Now we start looking at our Bibles. Second, Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Look at verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, look at verse 15. We need to thank him for providing his son as an offering for our sin. Verse 15 says, But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make, make my glorying void. All right? Okay. No, I said Corinthians, didn't I? Amen. He said Corinthians. Yes. Didn't I? Did I say Corinthians? Yeah. Second Didn't I say Corinthians? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at First Corinthians. Amen. <laughs> well, they're right next to each other. So anyhow, no, no, where I meant, not what I said. Okay. All right. Second Chron. Sec uh, see, you got me all messed up now. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter nine. Look at verse fifteen. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. Amen. That makes sense. Amen. I read that verse and I said that didn't make any sense. But and I, you know, I got to be honest. Sometimes I make, I'll make a note of the wrong scripture or write it down wrong. Okay. That time I just turned to the wrong one. Okay. So we need to, we need to be thanking Him. Thanking God for providing His Son for the offer as an offering for our sins. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. Amen. Number two, we need to thank Him for providing us the Word of God that we might have to, and might know the truth. Back here to Romans. This will be a little easier. Won't be it mixed up with the two Corinthians or Chronicles. Romans chapter one. Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 14. We need to thank him for providing us the word of God that we might know the truth. Starting in verse 14 of Romans chapter 1, the Bible says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as is, it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen? All right? Turn over here. Turn, get, leave, your, leave, your, leave your finger there in Romans because we're going to come back to Romans chapter 10. But turn over here to, with me to James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, look at verse 18. James chapter 1, verse 18, it says, and, and of his own will begat us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Of his own will begat he us with the, what's that next three words? Word of truth. Amen? We have the word of truth. Okay? Back to Romans now in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Starting in verse 9. And oh, those of us that accepted Christ as our Savior and, and those of us that 
that should be leading people to Christ. This, this is some, some, some wonderful scripture, all right? Verse 9 of Romans chapter 10, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with the mouth, thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Double check where I'm reading down through verse 17. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now then... Shall they, how then, excuse me, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peach, peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what? Word of, Word of God. God. Amen? That's what brought me to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ was the Word of God. Those of any of you those that have heard my testimony, I, 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 I got back back before I got saved. I was a, I was, I was a bad dude. I was a sinner. I of the first of the ultimate degree, and things were going on in my life. And for some reason, somehow, God put a Bible in my home. Now I wasn't known for being a Bible. I was, I didn't go out and buy it. I didn't, but. A Bible, I found a Bible in my home. And as I found that Bible, God, God led me to the book of Romans. And as I read the book of Romans, God led me to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? The Word of God. How can they believe without the Word of God? Amen? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Oh, that's why we in this church, this church must be a church that preaches the word of God. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. So we need to thank him for providing his son. Thank him for providing the word of God. Amen. And we need to thank him for sending the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin and to bring us to Christ. Turn back here to the Gospel of John. To the Gospel of John. Chapter 16. Gospel of John, chapter 16, starting at verse 7. Gospel of John, chapter 16, starting at verse 7. The Bible says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Is it expedient for you that I go away? For if I go not away, the Comforter, it should be a capital C in your Bible, amen? That means it's a proper name, amen? That's one of the names, one of the names of the Holy Spirit. All right. I will if I if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believed on not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Amen? We need to thank him for sending the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin and to bring us to Christ. Amen? We can't, we can't get saved if we're not drawn. Okay? All right? If we, if, we, if, we, if, 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 we, if we base our salvation on just because that's the right thing to do, that's not salvation. Does that make sense? We have to be, we base our salvation on the very fact that the Holy Spirit has drawn us to God. The Holy Spirit's the one that convicts us. We, he, may, he may use a preacher, he may use someone uh, talking to him about talking to them about this needing of Christ as their Savior. But if they're not using the Word of God, if, it's, if they're not convicted through the Holy Spirit, then it's not salvation. 
I've led, I've led many a person to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because they got caught up in an emotional thing in some place where I think of a precious young lady many years ago was preaching a revival or pre preaching a revival and, and she'd been saying, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. And, 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 and God had put my, on my heart that, that one particular night to kind of focus on salvation. And the invitation came and she came. She said, Brother Jim, I want to get saved. Okay, so uh, you've been giving me a testimony of salvation as we talked about it. She come to confess the fact that she'd gone to a teen thing given by one of the Pentecostal guys that are out there doing stuff, and she got caught up in the emotion because all her friends were rushing to the front. So she rushed to the front with him, and he did this big old thing. Y'all repeat after me, and gave him a false sense of salvation. She came under conviction under the preaching of the word of God, and she says, I need to get saved. Amen? There's a big difference, okay? There's a big difference. We should, thank, we should thank God for his sending the Holy Spirit to convict us of sin and bring us to Christ. And then number four, we need to thank him for giving us the assurance of salvation and victory. Amen? Back here to Romans, back over here, turn back over here to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Look down here to verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man hath not the spirit of God, he is none of his. Amen? Turn over here to 1 Corinthians. I'll get it right because I'm going to be in the right one this time. Verse Chapter 15, look down there to verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, look at verse 57. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? All right. Turn over here to 1 John. I basically, I have, now you see mine a little more than that, but I have basically, I have two permanent tabs in my Bible. One's First Chronicles chapter seven and verse chapter seven and verse fourteen, and the other one's First John chapter five, starting in verse ten. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in him, but he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. What is this? What is what is this? Is this the word of God? Is this not a record of Jesus Christ? Amen? John, 1 John chapter 5. Okay? All right? Page, page, page 1520, Brother Johnny. <laughs> okay. All right. Verse 11, verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given us, given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may what? Know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. We have, if we have Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have what is a no-so salvation. Because we believe. Not because of what we felt, amen, but because we believed, amen. amen? Our salvation is based on belief, not feelings. I, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior when I was 28 years old, over 40 plus years ago. And there was times in my life that I, don't, I haven't felt saved, amen? I've been in the deep and dark down depressed type and if I base my salvation on that then I'm not saved amen I base my salvation on the fact that I believe the word of God 
That's where that eternal security, that's where that assurance comes from. When we start doubting, we go back to the Bible. Amen? You know what? That would be a great thing for you to make some notes in the back of your Bible when you need to feel that assurance. Go back to John chapter 3 and verse 36. Go back to 1 John chapter one, uh, 5 and verse 13 that says you have eternal life. That, amen? It's what the Word of God says. It's not what I say. Amen? I'm not the one. I, don't, I can't lead you. I can't save you. Amen? I can't save you. So I can, I can save you physically if you're drowning and I reach down and pull you up out of the water. But that's not the same thing. Jesus Christ saves us. Amen? And once we're saved, as we Baptists say, once saved, always saved. Amen? We could get into how grammatically that's not correct, but that's the best way to remember how we can say, I have Jesus Christ as my Savior forever. First John chapter 5 and verse 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. How long is eternity? Forever. Forever. When does it start? Now. Amen? Eternity has nothing to do with the past. Eternity is from this point forward. Amen? And our salvation is from that point of when we accept Christ forward for eternity. Amen? All right? Okay. So we need to give thanks unto God. Back back here in our scripture, back here in 1 Chronicles chapter over back up here in First Chronicles, excuse me. Yes, First Chronicles chapter 16. First Chronicles chapter 16. Then, it, then, then on that day, David delivered the, first the psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Verse 8 says, give thanks unto the Lord. Then it says, call on his name. So what is this? This is advice to Christians. Call on his name in verse 8 there it says. Listen, there are many things, uh, there are many things that we can rightly ask God for. And I'm sure God wants our needs met. But I believe there are some things we need to ask God for today as the need is much greater, is so it's greater. Number one, that a great number of laborers, laborers enter the harvest field for lost souls. Amen. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Verse 38. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Thank the guys that were here yesterday. Amen? Amen. Let me think. So, one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had eight guys. Eight guys here yesterday. Amen? Can you, ima can you imagine what we did yesterday if it was only two guys? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah, two tools, too. Yeah, okay, all right. But we could have had all the tools in the world, but if we only had two guys, all, all the tools wouldn't have done us any good, right? We had to have, we had to have the laborers, amen? We can, have, we can have a stack of these this high, but if we don't have the people to use them, they're no good. Amen? Like he had said too, uh, what is it, many hands make light labor? Many, many hands make light work is what it's called. Yeah, yeah. Have, you ever, have anybody ever seen that picture of the, is it the Amish or the Mennonites that moved a barn? And they did it by hand. They had so many people there that they were all able to reach down and pick up the barn and walk together and move a barn. Have you ever seen, you ever seen that picture? 
All right? Okay? Amen? It's the same way, it's the same way with God's word. Okay? All right? People say, preacher, it's your responsibility to build the church. It's not my responsibility to build the church. More people come because people invite them than come because the preacher invites them. Amen? Amen? All right? Okay? So as we have a desire to build the church, it's the people that need to be willing to do that too. All right? One of the, our prayers need to be, as Jesus said here in verse 38, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Okay? We need to pray. We need to call on his name that a great number of laborers will enter the harvest field of lost souls. Number two, that God's ministers might have the boldness in preaching the word of God. Uh oh Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 19 and 20. Praying always with all with all prayer and supplication in the Lord, in the in the Spirit, excuse me. Let me back up and read that right. Get my tongue untied. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching uh, thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Look, 19 and for, for I, I meant to read 19 and 20. I wrote 18 there too. Okay. As, and for me, okay, kind of leading it. I'm, I'm glad I backed up to 18 because it's talking about praying and pray for me. Paul's saying pray for him. But I'm also saying pray for me, pray for Jake, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen? Pray that I have the boldness to preach the gospel. Amen? Pray that Jake have the boldness to preach the gospel. Amen. That all preachers have the boldness to preach the gospel. That we not be shy and be concerned. Well, I don't want to hurt Sister Berta's feelings. Amen? No. Listen, if, 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 if listen, preaching, preaching should make, should, preaching brings about guilt in two ways all right if a person's lost it ought to bring about the guilt of con of, of condemnation does that make sense that they may might see that without jesus christ as their savior they're going to hell okay that's a word that's a word that doesn't get out used out of the pulpit enough okay all right okay all right Number two, it ought to bring about guilt with, with Christians in that it ought to bring conviction. Does that make sense? Amen. Okay. I had a preacher one time tell me, he said, Brother Jim, I can't have you preach in my church. And I said, why, brother? He says, because you might make my people feel guilty. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. When he said that, it kind of caught, shocked me, kind of caught me off guard because you all know how I preach anyhow. Amen. I, I don't think I hold back too much. Amen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. And so I went, and I, went, I went and studied out that word guilt, and that's where I came to the understanding that the preaching of the gospel, when it makes people feel guilty, it's either guilty because of a condemnation, uh, because they're lost and in need of Jesus Christ as their Savior, or it brings about a guilty feeling of conviction because, they're not, because Christians aren't living right. Amen? An old preacher named R. A. Torrey made the statement. He says, "I, I pre, I, I, he says, I, I pre, I preach. Oh, I'm gonna, I, I want to, I want to quote this right. He says, I preach that 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 I make make saints and oh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna misquote it. I'll, I'll, I'll have to look it up. Okay, all right, okay. But that pre, that ministers, that preachers might have boldness in preaching the word of God. Okay, all right." Okay, and number three, 
that God's people might become doers of the word and not hearers only. First, in James, over here in James, the book of James in chapter 1. James chapter 1 and verse 22. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You think <laughs> you think you deceive the preacher when he preaches a particular message or he preaches a, preaches a particular need or uh, preaches a particular truth and you don't and you don't follow through with it? You think you're deceiving the preacher when you don't do it? You know who you're deceiving? Yourself. Amen. All right. Okay. <clears throat> The word of God's there for us as individuals, as well as the church and as well as the world. But it ought to be to us first. Amen. All right. So we need that. We need to be calling on God that God's people might become doers of the word and not hearers only. I want to get through this last one real quick. OK, number three, back here, back here, back here in First Chronicles, chapter 16. I'm, I'm just going to kind of make known his deeds among the people. Make known his deeds among the people. All right? We need to make known God's deeds of mercy that are recorded in his word and experienced in our lives. Back to John chapter 4. I've only got a few minutes. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Verse 28, starting verse 28 down through verse 30. John chapter 4, I'm going to back up to verse 27 of John chapter 4. And upon, his, and, upon, and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seeketh thou, or what, why talkest thou to her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith unto the men, Do, we, do, you, know, do you understand who this account is about? the what we call the woman at the well amen what do, what do we know one of the, what's one of the things we know about the woman at the well she was divorced five times she was married six amen and actually he goes on to say and you're not married to the one you're living with you're slack shacking up amen <laughs> that's something that doesn't get, you find i get pretty bold with that i don't say cohabitate <laughs> you know what <laughs> You're shacking up. Amen. All right. Uh, there we go. Okay. Where was I? Okay. 28. 28. Yep. And the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith unto the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is this not the Christ? Amen. Look at verse 30. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. You know, one of the things that's going to get you to get people into church is you telling them what God did for you. Okay, you can tell you, you can go out there and tell people how good a preacher brother Jim is, how good a preacher brother Jake is, but that's not gonna that's not gonna reach him near as quickly as you go out and say, you know what God did for me. Amen. That's gonna reach him faster, cause I'll guarantee you, there are men in this valley, there are men in this town, there are men are out there that are more eloquent. I'm surprised I got that word out with my two teeth. Amen. Because I'm not going to try it again. All right. <laughs> that I am, than I am when it comes to preaching. Okay. I'm an old country boy and I say some goofy things. Okay. And I pronounce some words wrong. Okay. All right. <laughs> but there, and there are men out there that have gone to school for years to learn to be good speakers. Have the right pronunciation, enunciation, and all that kind of stuff. Amen. Uh, I, I I heard a story. I'm, there, there's there there. He's an old cowboy actor named Dale Robertson. Okay, tales. He's famous for tales of Wells Fargo. Okay, Dale's out of Oklahoma. Okay, all right. And, huh? Say again. 
anyhow, coming out of Oklahoma, to, and he, w he was known as a master horseman. I mean, there wasn't probably anybody as good in Hollywood or anywhere because that's what he was known for, breeding horses and, ri and being a, ri a, a master rider. Anyhow, he had the old Oklahoma draw type thing, and he, and he had that rough type speaking. And so when, he, when they, he got into acting, they came to him and said, Dale, we want you to go to classes and learn how to speak. Well, old Will Rogers, if you ever heard of him, Will, he went to, he knew Will, because they were both from Oklahoma, he went to Will and he asked Will about it, and Will said, no. No, because the way you speak is you. And one of the things he became, for, one of the other things he became, became famous for was the way he spoke was him. Amen? Sean Connery, have you ever heard of Sean Connery? Amen? <laughs> Sean Connery is 007. He's Scottish. And if you ever listen to him, that's, that's, that's his accent. That's the way he speaks. And they approached him and said, we want you to play this part of a Spaniard, and we want you to learn to speak with a Spanish accent. And he said, no. I'm Scottish. I'm going to speak the way I speak. So whether he played a Spaniard, he played an Arabian, he, he played a double O.C., he, whatever, he, he played a cat. He was in a Western where he was in the United States, and he always spoke with his Scottish accents because that was him. Amen? All right? I'm the same way. I'm going to talk the way I talk. Amen? All right? Okay? All right? So, what? <laughs> Where, where, not, where was I going with that? Okay. <laughs> Make known God's deeds of mercy that are recorded in his word and, and experienced in your lives. You can look up Titus 3, 5 and, use, and also look up Mark 5, verses 18 through 20. All right. We, we may need to make known his deeds among the people by make known God's deliverance from Satan and the penalty and power of sin. Right. We're still in John Turn over here a couple of chapters. Look over here in John chapter 8. I want to... There's the other thing I kind of get carried away. Amen? All right, John chapter 8. Look at verse 38. Or 36, I'm sorry. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen? A couple of things I want to focus on there. Make you free. Not set you free make you free it's two different things okay all right and then as he says ye shall be free indeed anytime the word shall is used it's a promise Woo! Amen. amen it's a promise all right we need to let people know what god's done for us okay all right he will he will make us free he, he will take liquor away from us. He will take drugs away from us. He will take pornography away from us. He will take those sins that we're caught up in away from us if we let him. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to let him. Amen? you got a broken arm and you go to the doctor. What do you got to let him do? you got to let him fix it, don't you? Amen? You can't go to the doctor and say, Doc, i got a broken arm. And he says, okay, let me fix it. Nope. <laughs> amen? <laughs> now, I, uh, amen? Okay? All right? Listen, God will fix that in us that needs to be fixed in us if we will let him. He will make us free, and we will be free. We are promised freedom if we will let him make us free. Okay? All right? Okay? And then we need to make note. Okay, you can also check out. I'm trying. I, I, I've, I'm gone over time. Romans chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Romans chapter 6, verses 14 through 18. Well, let's go ahead and look at them. Let's go ahead and look at them. I've already gone over. Chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Starting at verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. There are too many out there that says, since I'm saved, I'm saved from sin, I can live my life however I want. 
It's not the way it works. Amen? All right? Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free, whoop, there it is again, made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. Okay? And then lastly, lastly, back over in James chapter 1 and verse 17. Amen? Make known his deeds, make known his provision. His provisions for us. Verse, verse 17 of chapter 1 of the book of James. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. We need to make God's known, amen, his provisions known. All right? Okay. All right. We'll take us a little break. Amen? Okay. Brother Jim, can we have any uh, 